Today we're going to be looking at, because it, all the eyes of the world have focused this Monday on the 70th anniversary of Jerusalem, the US Embassy move, that was a major thing wasn't it, and then all the things that happened after that, I thought I'd make this video something a bit more positive in times it can be a bit depressing at times isn't it but going right to the end well near the end of revelation we were looking at revelation 21 what does it tie up with it ties up with one of my favorite prophets that has produced many predictions that have come true including the birth of christ the messiah and how he would live his life and how he would die as well right down to the last details and all his prophecies concerning that were fulfilled and there's a number of other prophecies he has stated which have been fulfilled as well his track record is second to none isn't it and that there's still a number of prophecies that remain unfulfilled and this is one of them and basically what we're going to do, we're going to look at five verses that I've seen, which I've bumped into on my travels on doing a prophecy video for a country in the Middle East, which I'm still working on at the moment. It's not going to plan, so I thought I'd make this video quick instead. And this is comparing Isaiah 60 to Revelation 21. There's a lot of similarities here. I think Isaiah is talking about the same place, this new Jerusalem that comes out of the sky, isn't it? Let's read some of these verses. The first one is Isaiah 60, 11. Therefore thy gates shall be open continually, they shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought. And this cross refers with the treasury of scripture knowledge to Revelation 21, 25. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. If we go to Isaiah 60, 19. The sun shall be no more thy light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee, but the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and the, thy God thy glory. And if we go to Revelation 21, 23, which is the cross reference. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. If we go to Isaiah 60, 20. Thy sun shall no more go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself, for the Lord shall be thine everlasting light, and the days of thy mourning shall be ended. And the, and the corresponding cross-reference in Revelation is, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. We go to Isaiah 60 21 thy people also shall be all righteous they shall inherit the land forever the branch of my planting the work of my hands that I may be glorified the cross reference in Revelation is and there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth neither whatsoever work of abomination or maketh a lie but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life and finally, Isaiah 63. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. And in Revelation 21, 24, the cross-reference. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk into the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honour into it. I mean, this is way down the line in Revelation, isn't it? But you can see... It's not word for word, but what Isaiah is saying is repeated by St. John the Divine in Revelation 21. It's what Isaiah is talking about there is this new Jerusalem, this city that comes out of the sky. It's a sort of a heaven on earth sort of situation, isn't it? 
and the gates will be open. Yeah, but only the righteous can enter. And I think it's just such a beautiful thing, you know, it's it's such a and I suggest you read Revelation twenty one instead of focusing on all this the other parts of it which are more dramatic, I know, but it's such a a beautiful number of verses that Isaiah sixty ties up very strongly with. So he's talked about the same thing. Anyway, this is Frank of the Twelve Gates. Keep your eyes firmly fixed on the Lord. Peace, love and joy.